So today, hi everyone, I'm going to talk to you about stroke and stroke rehabilitation. But before we understand stroke rehabilitation, let's try and understand what stroke is all about. Did you know that stroke is the second leading cause of death around the world? So what happens when someone suffers from a stroke? Well, a blood clot will form in the brain, and this will prevent blood from flowing elsewhere around the brain. And due to this, brain cells die, and the affected regions, there are abilities that control, that these regions control, uh, they are lost. So try and imagine not being able to feed yourself, not being able to dress yourself, or even walk. Feels like a very scary thought, doesn't it? The sad thing is, this is actually a harsh reality 15 million people face on a daily basis. And quite recently, this became a harsh reality for me and for my dad. But I'll tell you more about him later. You see, the amazing thing about the human mind is, even though disabilities are lost, you can relearn them through exercises. And that is what stroke rehabilitation is about. Patients will go through sessions with therapists, and in each session, you would have exercises. And these exercises are designed to ensure you regain those lost abilities. So one such example is, try with me, please carry on. Uh, stretch your hands out. OK, cool. And put it back in. Do this a couple of times. Now imagine, just carry on doing, imagine doing this 100 times a day. Yeah, for the young ones, we will get bored pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. And you couple this, that you are actually paying a lot of money to do this, you will get pretty demotivated very fast. And that's an issue, and that's the biggest problem. So coming back to the problem my dad, well, my dad suffered from a stroke recently, and he lost some function in his hands. What happened next was he was told to go for rehabilitation. And over a period of time, we, I saw him losing the motivation. And then he would tell me, you know, I don't want to go. And I'd be like, Dad, please, let's go. Let's go. Let's go for rehab. Let's get you better. And one day, I got so tired, I snapped. And I told my dad, you know what, Dad? If you don't go for rehab, you're not going to get your exercises done. Your hands are not going to recover. You know what? You can forget about driving. See, the funny thing is, my dad really loves driving. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it hit him, you know? He became self-motivated. He became more proactive in doing uh, his exercises. But the funny thing is that, you know, you can have top-notch doctors coming in. You can have state-of-the-art equipment. But if a patient is not motivated, then what is the use of all, it, all of this? And the sad thing is that motivation has to come from within. Doctors cannot prescribe it. You cannot buy it at a pharmacy. So how is it that we motivate patients? And I asked a few of my friends, and one of my friends gave me the best answers. And he said, you know what? Make it fun. How? He said, you know, disguise these exercises as games, so it engages these patients. And I was like, you know what? I can do that. I'm a developer can write code for this. Yeah. <laughs> and as all developers, we try and get some people along. So I, grew up, I grabbed a group of friends, and we said, you know what, we're going to build games, but instead of using your mouse and keyboard, let's get them to interact. But how are we going to do that? Well, we used the Kinect. What the Kinect is, it has a, sensor, a set of cameras that will track your motion and translate that into interactions on screen. So we decided, you know what? Okay, let's hook this up to an awesome game. It's an, a cool device. And we decided to pick asteroids. Now, what you see is as the player moves left, spaceship moves left, and as he moves right, the spaceship moves right. And we're like, you know what? This is so cool. Let's get it out. Let's get people to play with it. So we brought it to a home uh, for the elderly, and we got patients to play. And we're like, you know, we rocked it until one patient steps up. And the sad thing is, this patient had a lot, a very low level of mobility. So his hands would always stay 
very close in the center. That meant that his spaceship would only be in the center. So you'd see asteroids going past on the left or on the right. And we're like, you know, it hit me that we are all designing games on a one-size-fits-all basis, but stroke is not one-size-fits-all. Stroke affects people differently. And so we said, you know, this won't do. Let's go back and redesign this. And that's where we came up with Tara. So Tara is your therapy and rehabilitation assistant. What she does is, as soon as a player steps up on screen, Tara would analyze her mobility, how much you can move on your elbows, your knees, on your shoulders. And based on that, Tara would actually tweak the games for you so that you can play fully. So now a patient with a low range of mobility could send his spaceships left and right. And Tara not only does that, because Tara would actually understand that in order to improve, I need to push you. So she makes it a little bit harder for you, so that you push a little further, you stretch out a bit you know, harder. And so we decided, you know what? Let's pack it up and let's get it tested again. Let's bring it to our home. And this time, we recorded it for you guys to see. So here's the response. It's more helpful that you can see also the effort from the patient that they're trying to do and play the game that you do. This is more easier also for us because this one we don't need to, they don't need to hold anything but if the patient's skill is very weak. So this one more on functional way, so it's easy for us also to assess them with regards to yeah, the range of motion, the movements and also their hand activity. So it's more helpful. You see, it all seems like pretty cool stuff, but we developers, we like the challenge. So we said, let's take it one step further. What we did then is to allow Tara to do tele-rehabilitation. What tele-rehabilitation is, is that patients can now stay at home, and they can play it in front of the screen. Tara would grab performance data and send it back to the hospitals. What this means is patients can now spend less time traveling, less money spent, and they can stay safe at home. What this means for hospitals is that they can free up a lot more resources for other users. And it was cool then, and then we said, you know what, no, let's make it awesomer. Since everybody's at home, let's get families to play with it. Now, I can join my dad in conquering galaxies. Yeah, my dad can be the driver, I can be the gunner. You know, if I feel like it, I can get another spaceship for myself. And so, it makes all of this a lot more fun, a lot more engaging. And it brings back the motivation. So what's happening now for Tara? Well, we are working really hard to make uh, Tara as awesome as possible. And then we release it to stroke patients and caregivers. And my hope is that one day Tara would actually help these patients and their caregivers get the best chance at the best quality of life possible. Thank you for listening, and have a nice day. <laughs>